everyone. Uh, welcome to another live socialist bake along. I'm so sorry, the sun is just like glaring in my eyes. Um, so as per usual, I'm going to natter to myself <laughs> for a few minutes to give time for people to sort of like filter in. Um, today we are going to be making what is honestly one of my favourite recipes. Um, People seem surprised when I say that, you know, I love trench cake so much um, because, you know, it's a World War One recipe. Why would you like that? But actually, it's actually a really, really good recipe. It's a bit like a fruit cake, but um, it's not as dense. It's not your typical fruit cake because during World War One, a lot of things were in short supply, um, as I suppose some things are now. Um, and so because of that, it's not quite so dense as your normal fruit cake. Um, it's not the sweetest of cakes either. Uh, love your shirt. Thank you, Daisy. I've got my nice little Trotsky pin to show allegiance to the IMT. Um, so, so yeah, because uh, a lot of things are in short supply, it's not so dense, it's not so sweet as a cake. Um, and it is really, really really nice i love it i made this a few times um when i was in sixth form actually because we were studying world war one literature in english and so i thought you know what to get people sort of in the mood and stuff i'll make some cake and i chose a world war one recipe i chose the easiest recipe um and also as it turns out the tastiest recipe so i hope that you enjoy uh the bake along today and um let me know if you are baking at home. Um, maybe I'll win a few of you over with this recipe. I know some of you are a bit sceptical, but I really hope that I can win you over because this is a fantastic recipe. So, um, first things first, uh, what we need to do is we need to grease and line our baking, our baking tin, our cake tin. So uh, I've got a square tin for this, um, for no reason, just because I think it looks cool in a square cake, as a square cake. Uh, you can use any shape you want. You can use um, you, know, you could use a circle. You could use a heart. You could use one of those weird silicon mold shapes that, and like weird and wonderful shapes. You can make it into a dinosaur. You could do anything, anything you want. I'm just using a square uh, because I want to. So I've got my uh, baking paper, parchment paper, greaseproof paper, whatever you call it, and I'm just cutting out my. Square. Got my square. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a piece of tin foil and a spoon. And I've got my butter or my dairy free spread if you're going vegan. This is a really good cake uh, to, uh, to make if you're vegan. It's so easy to veganize because there are no eggs in it. You just need to substitute um, the butter for a dairy-free spread and the milk for a dairy-free milk. I'm actually using a dairy-free milk because it's just what I happen to have in the in the fridge. So I've got my tin foil and I'm just running it round the bottom and the sides going back for more butter if I need to or dairy free spread if you're so inclined it's important to really make sure that you grease the sides in particular well because I'm not putting um, baking paper on the sides if you want to put baking paper on the sides you can um, I feel like it's a bit of extra effort that you don't necessarily need to go to Hope everyone's doing okay. So at least it's a nice day. We've had a not been so lucky with the weather lately. There we go. You can see it's a little bit queasy. So if you don't like butter, maybe look away now. But you can see it's all nice lined. So just gonna pop that in the bin. And now you get your cutout sheet and we're just gonna pop that in the bottom and oh look at that near perfect fit 
doesn't matter if it doesn't fit perfectly, it's fine, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so there you can see we've greased and lined our baking tin now. All right, first step is done. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you through uh, the ingredients and the quantities should you wish to bake this at a later date or if you're baking it now. Uh, the thing about uh, this recipe is it's from 1916 and so everything is given in imperial uh, pounds and uh, ounces and things. Uh, you might, if on your scales, if you're using scales, you might have um, an option you can see it in grams and kilograms and in pounds and ounces. Um, but if you don't have that option, covered in butter, if you don't have that option, then um, I've worked out some quick conversions for you. So the first thing is, and I realise everyone is facing a flour shortage, so perhaps this wasn't the wisest recipe to pick, but you need a pound and a half of flour, which is about 680 grams. That's plain flour. I know that's a lot of flour, um, but if you want, you could make a smaller cake and halve it, 340 grams. Uh, you could obviously get a smaller cake, but um, if you were a little bit low on flour, then you could always do that. I am planning to do a flourless recipe in a couple of weeks' time, so don't worry if you haven't been able to get some flour. There will be something that you can actually make soon. Okay, so we've got our pound and a half, 680 grams of flour. Then we have our four ounces, which is about 113 grams. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, the light in here is terrible. About 113 grams of butter or dairy free spread uh, then an interesting ingredient for baking but we need a little bit of vinegar only a teaspoon um, and the reason why we uh, have vinegar is because we're going to be doing a little chemical reaction a little bit of science um, which should be fun uh, we also have a quarter of a pint, which my trusty calculator tells me is about 142 millilitres of milk uh, or dairy free milk. Then we have three ounces of light brown sugar and three ounces of cocoa powder in here. I've mixed the cocoa powder and the sugar together just to save space with bowls. Um, you can have them in separate bowls, but three ounces of each, uh, three ounces, about 85 grams of cocoa powder and brown sugar. Uh, if you don't have brown sugar then caster sugar works just as well. What is my what is my brooch? My brooch it's an IMT pin it's got a picture of Trotsky on it um, and it says International Markers Tendency. I picked it up at a national conference uh, about a year ago. What would happen if I used my strong bread flour? Um, strong bread flour um, it wouldn't make a huge amount of difference. The thing about strong bread flour is it's got a higher gluten content um, so that when you're kneading bread, you're stretching that gluten so that um, for like structural purposes. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what would happen. I've never made a cake with bread flour. Um, I can't imagine it would be disastrous. Um, yeah, I think I think it should be okay. If anyone else with more baking science, food science knowledge than me wants to give an answer, then please do. <laughs> uh, I only have balsamic or apple cider vinegar or rice vinegar. Um, that shouldn't be a problem um, because if you only want a teaspoon of vinegar, it's not going to uh, alter the flavour much. You can't taste the vinegar when you make this when you eat this cake once it's cooked. Um, I would go for apple cider vinegar just because it's sort of a little bit sweeter um, but it's honestly not the end of the world if you don't if you have a, like a stronger vinegar um, I'm just using malt vinegar because it's the easiest to find in the shops it's kind of like the default vinegar I suppose um, but I promise you you won't be able to taste this in the cake it's purely for science reasons that we're using vinegar um, the answer is that it would be heavier. Okay, well, since this is a, like a lighter fruit cake than a more traditional fruit cake, um, 
that's not going to be a massive problem. It's just going to be slightly more dense than um, than my cake would be. But normal fruit cake is really dense anyway, so again, I can't see that being a huge issue. Right, yes, three ounces of sugar, three ounces of cocoa powder. Then we have three ounces of dried fruit of your choice. The original recipe says currants. I'm using raisins simply because that's what I could get hold of, what I had lying around in the shelves. Um, you can use any dried fruit of your choice. You could use cranberries, excuse me, cranberries, apricots. You could substitute them for nuts. You can do anything. Uh, I'm just using raisins because I like raisins <laughs> and it's closer to the original recipe. Then we, uh, sorry, I'm just doing my calculations. Then we also uh, want a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, it's important that you, or bake bicarbonate of soda, it's important that you use bicarbonate of soda because that's what's going to react with the vinegar. That's going to make our chemical reaction that's going to add air to our cake and give it a bit of rise. Um, then we have our spices. The original recipe calls for ginger and nutmeg so i'm using ginger and nutmeg because i love those spices um, but you could use any spices that you want you could use cinnamon you could use mace you could use clove if you wanted kind of an autumnal festive sort of um taste to it you could use any any spices that you like but i'm using nutmeg and ginger because they're my two favorite spices Sorry for a bit. No, honestly, ask as many questions and I will do my best to try and answer them. I will do my best to try and answer them. Um, all right. Now, um, now that that's that, that's everything. Um, if you want, you can grate in some lemon zest. I'm not doing that um, just because I don't want to waste a lemon um, that I'm then not going to use for something else. Um, if I knew that I was going to use the lemon, like I was going to use the lemon juice to make a curd for something else, um, then I might buy a lemon and grate in the zest. But since you know I'd only be using the zest, I consider that a bit of a waste. And so I'm not using lemon zest. But if you want to use lemon zest, then you can. All right. Let's. I've, I've natted on for a long time. Um, let's get baking. Now I'm just going to tilt this down. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now, what we're gonna do is, um, referring to the recipe, because for the first time I'm not using one of my own recipes, I'm using someone else's recipe. This was a recipe that was mailed out to um, soldiers um, in the trenches um, to bring, I suppose, a little bit of joy to their lives. Um, all right. So we've greased and lined our cake tin. What we're going to do is we're going to preheat the oven to about 170. If you don't have a fan oven, you can go a little bit higher than that. The original recipe says bake on a low heat for about two hours. Um, but when I was at school, that was a very long time to be baking um, because you know, after doing my homework and stuff, I didn't have a huge amount of time in the evenings to bake and I didn't want to be going to bed at one o'clock in the morning. So what I did is I found that if you bake it at a higher temperature for about half an hour, then it works just as well, uh, which is what we're going to be doing today. OK, first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our flour and we're going to take our butter, margarine, dairy free spread, whatever. We're going to tip it. Tip it into our bowl and we're going to rub in the flour and the butter sort of like we did last time with the scones so it's time it's time to get messy again it's time to get messy with the baking get your hands dirty It's quite uh, strange rubbing it using the rubbing in method um, for a cake. 
but it's uh, just uh, all for the consistency of it. And when you're rubbing in, when you've got such a, a disparity between the amount of butter that you have or dairy free spread um, and the amount of flour that you're using, you just need to make sure that you're really getting underneath to make sure that you're sort of mixing it up so that you know you don't have one lot of flour where all the butter is you know rubbed in and then you've just got completely dry flour as i said last week this is the same sort of technique this rubbing in the flour and the butter this is the same technique that you would use if you were making pastry uh, obviously, if you're making pastry, you have a lot more butter, um, and it's the same technique that you used when we were making scones last week. And what you want is you want a sort of going to see if you can see this. Hopefully, you can sort of see we've got this like fine breadcrumb texture. There. Now, I'm just going to very quickly wash my hands because they are covered in butter and flour um and i'm gonna i don't want butter and flour all over my mixer i'm just gonna wash my hands won't be a second I feel like I'm like a teacher of a class getting like the PowerPoint ready or something. I keep wanting to say, oh, you know, chat amongst yourselves <laughs> for a second. All right. So we have our butter and our uh, butter and our flour um, rubbed in to a kind of breadcrumb consistency. Speaking of washing my hands, at the beginning, I should have said, make sure that you've tied your hair back, wash your hands, wipe down your work surface um, for basic hygiene reasons. I did that off camera before I started filming. Um, and so I'm gonna give you all the benefit of the doubt and assume that you did as well. But just a little disclaimer. Right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our dry ingredients. Gonna add our sugar, our cocoa powder, gonna add our uh, dried fruit, there we go. We're looking at that, it really doesn't seem like a lot of dried fruit, does it? We're gonna add our uh, spices. I'm starting with about a teaspoon of each, but once this is mixed up into a nice cake batter, I'll give it a little taste and see if I want to add more. It's better to add a little bit less at first and then oh, I can actually get it on the spoon and then add a bit more later rather than you know, blow your head off with ginger. And then I'm going to attach these to my mixer. Just make sure that you can see that. Go. Okay. And then I'm just going to got my beta setting rather than my whisk. So, and then I'm just going to gently mix that together, just for a few seconds. Make sure it's nice and combined. If you don't have a mixer, don't worry, and it's actually probably, it's obviously much more authentic to make this without a mixer. Um, but it's also um, fine to, if you don't have a mixer. I'm just doing this because of my bad hands, and it's just easier. So We have our dry ingredients. Hopefully you can see that. Right, and oh, you just get that lovely smell. Um, from those spices, particularly the ginger. I'll probably have to add a little bit more nutmeg. Right, what we are going to do now is that we are going to do a little 
science experiment, uh, which is going to be so much fun. Um, I'm lying. It's uh, just going to be. It's just going to be a very basic chemical reaction. Um, what I have is I've got uh, just a small pot here, and I am going to add. Oh, I'm going to add my teaspoon of vinegar. That comes out. There we go. Come on. There. There. Just a teaspoon of vinegar. And when you think about all the dry ingredients we have, you know, you're not going to be able to taste that. And then what we want is half a teaspoon of baking soda or bicarbonate of soda. Yeah. And it's important that you use um, bicarbonate of soda because that's what's going to react with the vinegar. Now, I'm hoping that there will actually be a visible reaction that I can show you, but there may not be. Oh, you see that? Can you see that? Sort of. So because what I think is happening, if there are any scientists watch, watching, you know, feel free to, feel free to, um, you know, correct me. But what I think is happening is because uh, the vinegar is um, an acid and the baking soda is um, a base, an alkali, I think. Um, when you've got the two added together, they're going to make a chemical reaction and that's producing air which is going to help our cake to rise um so now that we've done that we're also going to add our milk and i'm going to give that a gentle stir by hand because i don't want this flying everywhere when i give it back to the mixer waste not want not Ooh, there we go back to the beat. Now, this is very flowery. It's very thick, as you can see. So I'm going to add some more milk to that. I'm just going to get another quarter of a pint. Gonna add that in. And then mix. Now I'm just going to put that back on the beater for a bit and I'm going to talk to you. Hopefully you can hear me over this. Do you think that cinnamon and cloves, yeah, cinnamon and cloves would, look, would work really well. Um, clove is a lovely spice. 
I love your skirt, thank you. Okay. Bloody cow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for any children watching. Remember, if you are using a mixer, make sure that you're uh, ah the peril of not working with your own recipe. I've made a rookie mistake. Um, I should know because I've made this cake so many times. Oh, I told you if this all went wrong at the very least, you get to laugh at my expense. I've um, why am I like this ribbit? I'm blaming ribbit for what I've done. Um, what I've done is I've uh, I originally planned to make a big cake, a big old cake. So that it would last, because you know, fruitcake lasts forever. And so I tripled the amount of flour that I put in. Guess what I didn't do for the other ingredients? <laughs> I've tripled the amount of flour that I was supposed to put, that I, I wanted to put in. So instead of using half a pound of flour like I was supposed to, or like the original recipe says, I've used a pound and a half of flour. I haven't done that for the other ingredients. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> don't be like me, kids. Make sure that you read the recipe, even if you've done it like half a dozen times. Like I, I know this recipe so well. I don't know why I, I should have like trusted in myself and not, um, not second guessed myself and gone and missed. Or I should have just like opened my eyes. That's what I should have done. It's okay. We can save this. We adapt. See, you're getting an extra lesson now because you're learning how to adapt to baking mistakes. Isn't that amazing? Aren't I generous? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this. We're going to save this cake. Okay, we're going to save this cake. And I'm going to add. So this is going to be a big, this is going to be a big cake. This is going to be a big cake. I hope you're ready, everyone. Because um, this is going to be a big cake. So I'm going to add some more. <laughs> Gonna add another eight ounces of butter. Um, oh, I hope my family like fruitcake, otherwise I'm gonna be in fruitcake for the next uh, however long. <laughs> the next two weeks it's just gonna be, yeah, breakfast, fruitcake, dinner, lunch, fruitcake, fruitcake. But that's okay because I love this, this is why it's a good thing that I chose a recipe that I really like. It's not too late to add them. See, exactly. It's never, it's not too late to come back from a mistake. We can do this, even though I'm running out of butter. Okay, so I've got, I just need another three ounces of butter. Oh, I hope my mother's watching and enjoying this. And like I said, as, as I've always said, this is the beauty and the peril of live baking. So, um, totally live and unscripted. I'm feeling a bit reluctant to post this one to my YouTube channel. Um, so that even more people get to enjoy my embarrassment. Now, obviously, we won't be able to rub this butter in. Um, there's we're too far along in the process for that. But, um, yeah. I'm just gonna smile, because pretend. Like, you know that meme where it's like the dog in the flames in the house that's on fire and it's just like, this is fun. Yeah, that's me right now. That's me right now. And I think I'm gonna change I think I'm gonna need something a little bit more powerful than a beater for all these ingredients 
Um, joy of life baking, everyone. This is. Yeah, I, I hope you're you at the very least you get to. You know I do. Dad, if I could post this cake to you, I would. Oh. I've just broken my mixer. Bear. My proper mixer is in Norwich. So we will be doing this the old fashioned way. And I'll be hurting my wrist. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. If I was a horse, they'd shoot me or something. It's okay. It's okay. So what's, what's that? What's that thing? Survive, adapt. Whatever. I'd like to take this moment to say that, you know, for all the pain and effort that I've gone to, it'd be really nice looking out the back of this. We could at the very least raise some money for socialist appeal so that we can, you know, Build the false Marxism off the back of a catastrophic error on my part. Let me find a wooden spoon. Hopefully I won't break this. Oh no, oh god, <laughs> yeah. Survive, adapt, overcome, that's the one. Thank you, Daisy. See, you're getting your money's worth, aren't you, at the end of the day. Survive, adapt, overcome. Okay, so we're going to need a little bit of old, good old fashioned elbow grease. I've had that mixer for a while. Oh, is that? No, I thought that was part of the mixer. No, it's a current. It's a raisin. The good thing about this is, is that we at least get to a... Uh, um, that's the wrong milk. We at least get to do the, uh, the vinegar experiment again. This is so chaotic. I love my life. See, I woke up this morning thinking, you know, something's going to go wrong. Um, something's going to go wrong. And um, lo and behold, it's okay. Survive, adapt, overcome. Deal with it. If I was a soldier, trenches, I wouldn't let all this good food go to waste. And as I say, at the very least, you get to laugh at my expense. Now I'm going to try and put that back in the mixer. I won't use the whisk, obviously, because that's broken. But hopefully the beater will still be Oh, well, there goes my plan to make vegan meringues. Um, unless I end up back in Norwich with my actual good mixer. Oh, Mum, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I got a new mixer and sort of... Oh, this one. Doesn't sound particularly healthy, but it's okay. We'll get there. Can we? No, you can't see the mixture ingredients at this point, Dad. No, you cannot. Well, on the plus side, it's looking a bit more of a cakey consistency, so that's good. Right. Hopefully you can hear me still. We stand the wise words of Comrade they <laughs> survive the task, whatever. Thank you. Right. Before I break another attachment. It's fine. The mixer itself is fine. It's just the... Um, run out of Save more 
wash out. Should we use this one? Okay. There we go. See, on the plus side, we get to do the vinegar. Oh, there must have been a little bit of baking, so I don't know if you can hear that, but it's still fizzing, so there must have been a little bit of baking soda left in the bottom. Okay. And another. That's. Got vinegar on it. This is a nightmare, but it's okay. See, you know, not everything always goes to plan, but that's okay. That is the joy of baking. There we go. Isn't that that? Can you hear that? Hoping that you can hear that. So silence. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I haven't broken this one. Okay, so it's looking a little bit more cakey in. If you can see that, it's looking a little bit more cakey in texture and unlike the consistency that I remember from when I've made this cake before. All right. Um, right, we also obviously need more sugar. So another. Another few ounces of sugar. Get said sugar. This is going to be an absolutely enormous cake. But that's okay. Enormous cakes are good. Nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with an enormous cake. Right. Get to see my amazing scales as well. Okay. Perfect. That's the sugar. And the cocoa powder. There. Tell you what, thank goodness I buy my baking ingredients in bulk. Well, not bulk, but in large quantities. See, if it, it, the, the very rarely does a baking disaster go so bad that it can't be salvaged. I've inadvertently taught you how to overcome baking. Sometimes you may need to just stand back and have a think, right, how can I save this? And you may need to turn it into something that it wasn't originally going to be, but that's fine, as, as the saying goes. <laughs> Survive, adapt, overcome. Which, uh, if that's not a fitting metaphor for the times that we're living in, I don't really know what is. But uh, yeah, at, the, at risk of uh, properly busting my mixer, I'm going to do this by hand. Um, so yeah, this is a cakey, cakier sort of <laughs> consistency, thank God. See, we got there in the end. We will get there in the end. Maybe I missed the beginning, but 
have you explained why it's called trench? Yeah, um, it's called trench cake because it was made in the trenches. Um, <laughs> as simple as that. This was a re this is a recipe from 1916 uh, that was sort of mailed out to um, you know, soldiers on the front line and stuff. And it was it's an easy sort of recipe because well, if you do it properly, um, there's not much uh, butter. There's not much milk there's no eggs so at a time when you know some foods were in short supply um this was a good cake to make um also because it's a fruit cake it lasts forever uh not quite as long as you know your traditional sort of christmas cake um because it's not like the same consistency but we're finally getting a sort of cakey Cake consistency. Okay. Now I'm gonna add more spices. My ginger, add my nutmeg. See, we're gonna we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there in the end. I'm gonna get there in the end, comrades. Gonna get there in the end. And yeah, I'll be having I'll be having trench cake for days and weeks to come. Not that I'm complaining because this one will be worth it. It's a lovely cake. And where are my raisins? There we go. Sort of. Hopefully, you can sort of see we're getting into a much more sort of one that you can actually put into a tin and bake as a cake. Um, I don't need to get another cake to grease that. Um, whilst I look for my raisins. Here we go. I'm not gonna bother weighing out three ounces, another three ounces. Yes, let's be authentic. This is all about being authentic, isn't it? So, well, it's not really. This whole thing has been a lesson in fake it till you make it, hasn't it? But, um,. Some more raisins in, or your dry, whatever your dried fruit of choice is. There. Perfect. Right. There. Oh, I'm making a right royal mess, both figuratively and literally. And there we go, and just see, there's nothing wrong with a bit of good old fashioned elbow grease. Um, make sure that if you, that you get right down to the bottom so that the uh, fruit is evenly spread throughout the cake. And there we go, I'm just gonna taste it to see if I Mm -hmm. I want a considerable amount more nutmeg. I think that's good for ginger. Nice kick at the back of the throat the ginger gives, but I just want something a little bit more. Oh, I love the smell of nutmeg. I think nutmeg is my favourite spice. Closely followed by cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon just reminds me of Christmas, which isn't a bad thing um, for the 15th of May. For me, 
that's perfect. Make sure that you are tasting your cake so that, you know, it's better to start out with not very much uh, spice and then work your way up rather than you know, go in all guns blazing and end up burning your mouth off. Right, now, let's see how much I can get in this tin before. Oh, it's heavy. It's a big boy. You know what? I reckon I can get the whole lot in. It's going to be a big cake, but it's fine. We deal. I don't know if I can push that. It's a bit of a flow, but it's okay. Not much mixture left. And So it's, as far as cakes go, it's a little bit on the thicker end, consistency-wise. Um, but that's okay, because it is a fruit cake. And it's not as dense as, oh, excuse me. It's not as dense as um, other, you know, like traditional Christmas sort of cakes. Um, which means it doesn't last as long. But conversely, uh, it's not as thick kind of thing. I need a trowel for this. See, it's been four, this is the fourth one of these baker longs, and the other three, they've just gone so well. It was about time for a slip up, wasn't it? It's about time. Oh well. We survived, we adapted, and we overcame. There. Lovely. So, no points, not whatnot. In. And now I'm going to put this in. I'm going to set the timer initially for 30 minutes, but because of how much is in here, probably need to do it for a bit longer. Remember the old trick of checking to make sure that a cake is baked is to, uh, is to stick a skewer in it, a cocktail stick or a knife. If it comes back clean, then it's cooked. If not, it needs to go back in for a bit longer. So, yeah, I'm going to stick that in for 30 minutes. I'm going to set that as a preliminary. It will probably take longer. But, um, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, let's see what we've got. 2020 is all about the British spirit and jingoism. Yeah, unfortunately. Are we allowed to bring baking to branch meetings when they're in person? Yes, I, I used to bring baking to branches quite a bit. Fake it till you make it, my pro. No, you're a fantastic comrade as it is. Um, fake it till you make it is like kind of like my motto. Is 2020 cancelled yet? I don't know. This cake isn't because we got there in the end. Um, okay, that's it. I'm not going to keep you waiting 30 minutes. I've already kept you waiting longer than I thought I would need to because of my disaster. But. If nothing else, I hope that you have A, laughed at my expense, B, uh, enjoyed watching me flounder and bake, and C, maybe you've learned that whatever happens, any bake, yeah, pretty much any bake can be saved in one way or another. Fake it till you make it, comrades. Um, thank you so much for joining me um, and my glamorous assistant who maybe hasn't been you know doing his fair share of the work um but comrade ribbit is always here thank you all for 
Joining me in my, uh, my most chaotic bake yet. Um, th thank you all so much for uh, your uh, support, your donations, your comments, your questions, everything. I'm very appreciative. Um, you know, you're all, you're, you're all great. Love you lots. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I'll be I'll be I'll be sure to uh, show you the finished disaster. No, it's not going to be a disaster. It's not going to be a disaster. I've made this cake enough times, and I've had my fair share of disasters. Um, and I'm by no means a professional. I'm sure that professionals have also had their disasters. Um, so if things go a little bit wrong, see, there's always a moral. See, I think of everything. Um, <laughs> if it all goes a little bit wrong, remember, bake it till you make it, and there's always a way out. Um, which I think is a nice little life lesson there. Um, so yeah, thank you once again. Um, and the, there's the link in the description if you would like to donate to Socialist Appeal so that we can be building the force of Marxism, uh, achieve socialism in our lifetime and make all this horrible oppression um, and, and make class society a thing of the past. Um, and yeah, forward to the world revolution. Thanks comrades. Love you all. You're such an insp- Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love you lots, everyone. Bye. YouTube. I'm so bad at technology. <laughs>